Hey there everybody. Today I want to take a look at optimization problems. Optimization, of course, is the process of maximizing or minimizing whatever it is you might be looking at. Might be a volume, might be minimizing cost or maximizing revenue, whatever it might be. Okay, so optimization is basically find the min or the max on some function. Okay, so the neat thing about mins and maxes in calculus is that they always occur at specific points. So if we think about some random curve, right, and think about the derivative, the slope of the tangent line, well, if I pick some random point like in here, it's going to be a positive slope, right? And then if I pick some point over here, it'll be negative. Since it's a continuous function, that means somewhere in there, there's a spot where that derivative is zero. And likewise down here, when I have a negative uh, tangent slope, and then here I have a positive tangent slope, continuous function, so somewhere in there, there's a zero derivative. And likewise here, and likewise here. Now, the maxes and mins then, as we cap over, as our derivative goes from positive to negative or from negative to positive, that derivative is equal to zero. So the maxes and mins always occur where the derivative is equal to zero. So max, min, uh, that implies that f prime, if f is our function here, is f. so our derivative is zero. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't necessarily imply it in the reverse, right? If our derivative is equal to zero, that doesn't necessarily mean that uh, we have a max or min. We usually have to check and look for a sign change in that derivative, going from positive to negative, if it's a max, or going from negative to positive, if it's a min. So, for example, say, if we have the function x cubed, x cubed does something like that, yeah? And what's the derivative of x cubed at zero? Well, let's see, the derivative would be 3x squared. And evaluating that derivative at zero, well, we get zero, right? So our derivative at zero here is sure enough zero but unfortunately that's not a max or a min, right? And if we check, our derivative is positive on this side of zero, and our derivative is positive on this side of the zero. So we didn't get that sign change in either direction. So the places where the derivative is equal to zero are called critical points, and they're candidates for maxes and mins, or what we call inflection points, where we have a change in behavior, but um, it's not a maximum or a minimum. Okay, but this tool does help us out. That if we find the, take the derivative and set it equal to zero, we're going to get the candidates for what could be maxes and mins. All right. So. One of the unfortunate things about these sorts of problems and kind of all story problems in general is that there isn't necessarily one way to solve them, right? Because they're all different. They all deal with different functions in different contexts, yeah? But optimization problems do sort of have a general structure that you can look for and like a sort of procedure to follow in order to solve them. So an optimization problem, they're always going to have what we call an objective function. An objective function. And that's the function that represents whatever quantity it is that we're trying to optimize, maximize or minimize, right? So our objective function, we might be trying to maximize the volume of a sphere, say. So we'll use the, the, vol the function for the volume of the sphere or whatever it might be. So this is, this is the function we're trying 
to optimize. Percentage of our objective function. Now, very often when we lay out that objective function, it's going to have multivar. You know, there will be many variables in there, and we're not necessarily going to know which one to go after or to try to to uh, figure out. So there's always going to be some additional information on top of your objective function. And these are going to be constraints. Okay. Now, you may be given some particular functions or some particular constraints about maybe the, the amount of area you have to work with or some length of fencing or there's some natural constraints. Um, ones usually to look for in general natural ones are like distances and likewise areas and volumes as a consequence, right? But distances are greater than or equal to zero. That's one natural constraint that will hit all the time. You know, if I have some function that's representing the volume, well, that's going to be some cubic function that might do something like this. Right? And I'm looking for maxes and mins, and I'm going to get one here and one here. And I say, okay, well, this, in this region, is zero to zero, that's, this is feasible. This makes sense. But over here, this solution, I'm getting a negative volume, and th that just really, there's no sense to that, right? So I have a legitimate reason to throw this solution out and say, okay, yeah, that's got to be it. That's going to be my maximum. Okay, so there'll be some constraint functions. They may be provided in the, um, in the question itself, or some may be just natural constraints like distances greater than or equal to zero. Now you do have to be careful considering that. Um, things like time, time doesn't necessarily have to be greater than or equal to zero uh, in the sense that if we set some arbitrary zero point, like 2000 is zero, well, 1995 is negative 5, and, and then that makes sense, right? So um, we do have to sort of put some consideration into what those natural constraints might be in context. Okay, oops. Uh, all right. So we've got our objective function. That's our function that we're trying to optimize. And we'll have some constraints. They may be provided in the problem, or we might have to bring some. And generally, these constraint functions are used to eliminate variables in our objective function. Like I said, this often will come out with a whole bunch of variables in it, and we don't know what direction to take. So we look at these constraints and say, can I use these to eliminate some variables? Eliminate variables. So once I've identified my objective function, got my constraints, and hopefully able to eliminate some variables, then I'll take the derivative of my objective function and set it equal to zero, because that's going to give me candidates for maximums and mins. So set the derivative of the objective equal to zero. Once we solve that, solve, find out where my derivatives are zero, these are my candidates for maxes and mins, and then I want to go back and check their feasibility. Like I said, are, are they going to give me some negative volumes or um, something that's ridiculous, for example? Or is there going to be one answer that's clearly correct? So set the derivative uh, equal to zero, solve it, and then check. Oops, not that little feasibility. Okay, so in general, that's sort of the structure of these optimization problems. Find my objective function, find the constraints, eliminate some variables, take my derivative, set it equal to zero, and solve, and then check my answers to see if they make any sense. All right, so let's try a couple. Let's say uh, two, two positive integers 
few positive integers. Um, whose sum is 20. Whose sum is 20. And the sum of squares, oh, sorry, sum of their squares. Um, what should we try? Ya min. I just made this problem up, so hopefully it's doable. <laughs> and it's not a maximizing problem either way. We'll find out. <laughs> okay, so two positive integers whose sum is 20 and the sum of their squares is uh, minimum. Okay, so we're minimizing the sum of the squares of these two numbers. So sum of two squares, I need some variables here to start figuring out what's going on. So let's say, um, let's be creative here. <laughs> um, let's say x is the first number and y is the second number. So I have these two numbers. Okay, fine. The sum of their squares is the minimum. So I have x squared plus y squared. This is my objective function. That's what I want to minimize. The sum of their squares. Okay. So here I have my objective function. It's got multivariable in it. So I don't really know whether I'm trying to go for y or x or what to do at this point. So I look back up at my problem and I say, are there any, is there any additional information in there? Is there any uh, constraints that I can use to try to eliminate variables? Well, let's see, the sum is 20, okay? So their sum is 20. So I have X plus Y, their sum is 20. All right, and they're positive integers, two positive integers whose sum is 20. So let's see, x has to be, um, I don't know, if, I guess if we're going to say positive, let's say strictly greater than zero and strictly greater than zero. Okay, so there we have some, uh, some constraints. And let's see, it looks like it's a 50-50 shot, uh, whatever we want to go. We can either say x is 20 minus y or y is 20 minus x. It's kind of a wash either way. Uh, so let's say y is 20 minus x. Okay, so this is coming from this constraint here that their sum is 20. Well, now that's going to allow me to substitute for y. I have x squared plus y is 20 minus x squared. Right. And now I got a little algebra to do. I should be able to. Uh, 20 squared is 400 uh, minus 40x to AB plus x squared. Okay, so it looks like we've got 2x squared. Minus 40x plus 400 equal to zero. Ah, I have a common factor of two there. That makes my life a little bit easier. x squared minus 20x plus 200 equals zero. And I have a very strong feeling that um, that's not going to factor. We need integers though. Um, let's see, let's try this. X and X. So size are the same, both negative. Uh, we need two numbers whose product is 20 and whose sum, or product is 200 and sum is 20. 